unashamed and naked in a garden that has never seen the rain. Rulers of a kingdom full of joy, never marred by any pain. The morning all around them seems to celebrate. Unashamed and naked in a garden that has never seen the rain. Rulers of a kingdom full of joy, never marred by any pain. The morning all around them seems to celebrate the life they've just begun. In the majesty of innocence, the king and queen come walking in the sun. But the master of deception now begins with his dissection of the word. And with all his craft and subtlety, the serpent twists the simple truth they've heard. While hanging in the balance is a world that has been placed at their command. And all their unborn children die as both of them bow down to Satan's hand. Then just before the evening, in the cool of the day, they hear the voice of God as he is walking. But they can't abide his presence now, so they try to hide away. But still they hear the sound as he is calling. Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam. Struggles ever yield. He eats his meals in sorrow till he sinks into the dust whence he came. But all down through the ages, you can hear his maker calling out his name. Adam. Adam. Where are you? Adam, Adam, where are you? And though the curse has long been broken, Adam's sons are still the prisoners of their fears. Rushing helter skelter to destruction with their fingers in their ears. 
While the Father's voice is calling With an urgency I've never heard before Won't you come in from the darkness now Before it's time to finally close the door Rejoice for the river is here, and we 
Good morning and welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to our streaming service for Easter Sunday this year. We have several announcements for the good of the congregation this morning. Several things are, are happening in our communities. We will continue to stream as we have for, for some time now until the stay at place order is uh, removed from the state. We do have uh, several activities that are available online through our worship study and our book study. Uh, check out our Facebook public pages to uh, join one of the groups and participate in study. We have several prayer requests on our prayer list today. We want to continue to uh, lift up our, our regular folks that are, are on our long-standing prayer list, but we also want to continue to lift up some needs at the Mountaintop Boys Home, uh, we want to continue to lift up Drew for recovery uh, during his cancer treatment at this time, especially when there is more risk. Uh, of course, all of the victims and current uh, people suffering from the coronavirus, those who have lost family members in this time, especially our health care workers, those who are jobless, uh, broken families, and those who are homeless, uh, as well as uh, Tom with his continued recovery from his infection, uh, Ben and his recovery from his uh, retina surgery, and Bobby with his hip. We also want to lift up uh, the family of Sandy Lore. That's William's cousin. Uh, she passed away this week. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Our call to worship this morning comes to us from praise and harmony. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Opening hymn this morning is Christ Our Lord is Risen Today from the Global United Methodist Church's Virtual Choir.
Our first scripture reading comes to us this morning from the book of Acts, in the 10th chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All of the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now let us join together in our responsive reading. Our responsive reading this morning comes to us from the 118th Psalm. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I might enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. And now for our favorite hymn, Jesus Loves Me. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the children that are in our lives and for those who we come across in our communities and the neighborhoods around us. In this time of uncertainty for them, Lord, pour out your special blessing upon them. May we see in their faces love and joy of a time that puts their trust in you. Give them comfort and peace. Give them people around them who are godly examples of how to live a daily life, even in the midst of turmoil. And now, Lord, we come to you also, praying for those in our nation, for those who have come and are serving in our leadership, in our communities, our city, in our state, in our nation, and around the world. 
Lord, give them your peace. May they turn their ear to you for wisdom and discernment and for guidance. May they keep their ear to you. And may they govern us in peace so that we may give you all the glory for it. We pray for the leaders of our church as they continue to try and to serve and be your arms and be your feet and be your presence in and amongst our communities around us. We especially lift up those who are in our military, those who are not able to be with their families at this time and may be in harm's way, whether it be from conflict or whether it be from threat of disease. We just ask that you put your angels around them and protect them, Lord. Especially we lift up to you Clint and Jacob and Greg, Chris and Cody, Corbin, Caleb, Luke, Alina, Austin, and Matt. Guide and direct them and make your love known to them and draw them close to you and bring them home safe to us. Lord, we also lift up to you those who are in our law enforcement and first responders and those who are serving on the front lines of this health care crisis. We especially lift up to you Buck and Lacey and Pete, Frank and Sarah, Sharon, Tyler, Jennifer, and Grant. We ask that you guide them and direct them. Give them a sense of comfort and peace. Give them strength and endurance in all that they do. We lift up to you this morning as well those who are governing in the Mountaintop Boys Home and the boys who are there continue to provide for their needs. We give thanks to the Rotary and to those folks who are able to help provide for them food and nourishment in this time when sometimes food and nourishment is scarce. We ask that you be with Drew in his continued recovery and through his continued treatments for, for cancer. We ask that you be with those who have suffered loss from the coronavirus and those who are suffering now with illness and infirmity. Lord, we just pray that you cast away the spirit of infirmity and that you provide healing to all those who are suffering. We ask that you protect the health care workers and give them strength. We ask that you be with those who are jobless, Lord. More than half of the world is without work and the other half is trying to provide. We know that you provide all things and keep people from being in despair. Let them know that you will provide all their needs for them. We ask that you be with families that are broken. Restore and mend them, Lord. Let them find your love and draw them to you. We give thanks that Tom is recovering from his infection and ask that that continue to do so. We also give thanks that Ben is recovering from his retina surgery and that Bobby's recovery, we pray, will continue to go well. We pray for Donald and for all the things that are going on with him, and we pray for Sandy Lohr's family, Lord, who is the cousin of William, and we pray for William as he has encountered loss in this time of his cousin. And now, Lord, we come to you in confidence, praying the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is Easter People Raise Your Voices, brought to us from our good friends in Nashville, Michael and Boo Williams. Michael will be playing and the two will be singing together.
Now, be assured that God hears our repentance. So let us turn our minds to the truth of confessing our sins to God and to one another. Praying together, Merciful God, we confess that like the disciples of old, we ran and hid in our hearts from the terror and sadness of the crucifixion. We didn't want to be there. We found ways of avoiding the scene and pretending that it was all a bad dream. But it wasn't a dream. Jesus our Lord was crucified. That is a fact. And we were numbed by the news. But now we have been given the most blessed gift of forgiveness for our stupidity and stubbornness. We have been given the gift of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. New light has shined in our deep darkness. Restore us again to your presence. Soften our hard hearts. Brighten our spirits. For we ask this in the name of the resurrected one, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not fear. God has conquered death. Jesus Christ, who was crucified, is risen from the dead. Love has been poured out again for each one of us. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Our epistle lesson comes to us this morning from the letter to the Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Our gospel lesson comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, in the 28th chapter, beginning at the first verse. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. And so they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day and for this time together. Lord, we come and we celebrate your resurrection the reason for our hope, our assurance, and our very lives. And now, Lord, as we come to you, let us put aside all distractions. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, for you are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. What a week, and what a month for that matter. For many of us, this has been a month of just unprecedented activity in our lives. 
We have seen so many changes just in the last 30 days. We've seen extreme measures taken by governments around the world to try and encourage people to become distant with one another in a way that is healthy so that the virus does not spread in the way that the pandemic of 1918 spread across the world, killing 50 million people or more. Lord, we come to you this day, and we know that that as we come together on Easter, it is hard for us not to be together. But we are together through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are together in ways that we never imagined. We have seen across this world so many things that are different. We have countries reporting things around us with Millions of people who have been confirmed infected and 108,000 deaths just in the last 30 to 45 days. Well, even in our own country this morning, we have seen for the first time in our own history that a state of emergency has been declared in all 50 states. Stay-at-home orders are in place for most of us, and nearly half of the world's population seems to be out of work. The other half is trying to figure out how to make ends meet and to supply care for others. And hopefully those of us unaffected financially will find deep pockets and and deep emotion in our heart that will allow us to give and to help those around us who may be in need. As we hear all of this news and, you know, maybe wonder what's next, You may or may not even agree that everything seems apocalyptic. So what does scripture say to us this day? And what has it say over the time of history? Today is the holiest day of all of our days in the church. The reason that we are even defined as a Christian is because of this day. Someone who follows the risen King, Jesus Christ who conquered death. And scripture is full of examples of unprecedented events and extreme actions. Maybe in this holiday time, you've taken the time to watch the television masterpiece, The Greatest Story Ever Told on TV. It's usually broadcast sometime or around this time of year. And from it, the incredible love story of God, the words of the Bible are told across the screen unprecedented events from past years and eons away. We know that we have seen the destruction of humankind in the garden when Adam and Eve fell into temptation and rebelled against God. A moment where from that point forward, we were all separated from God by sin and death was introduced into our world. We See in scripture and in the story of a flood where God knew in his heart that the heart of creation was wicked in ways that maybe we can't even imagine. And that so great was this wickedness that earth was reset with a great flood. Noah and his family were chosen because Noah walked with God and had a sense of righteousness and faith to repopulate the earth with a new start, taking two of each animal with them on the ark. But then we didn't really learn our lessons. We afterwards fell into a a time when we wanted to again make a name for ourselves instead of leaning on God. We as a people built a tower high, trying to build it taller than God himself so that we would have a name instead of God being the name that was high above the world. In the result of Babel, our language was scattered and people spread all over the earth. Abraham asked God to spare Sodom and Gomorrah. Even if 10 people could be found, he bargained with God from 50 to 30 down to 10, but not even 10 people could be found. And because of that, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. And yet also Abraham and Sarah were 
spared in this time and they were their righteousness and their faith they were made a promise abram was willing to give up his own son isaac but because he was willing to do so in faith god blessed the entire world and through isaac israel was chosen as an example of how we were to love and live with god but even then we had our ups and our downs as a people and humanity, the even the family of Israel, the chosen people, know that not everything works exactly as they are planned. When they take their eyes off of God, things don't work right. Joseph, the favorite son of Israel, was sold into slavery by his brothers. But God still used that to preserve both his family and the people in Egypt around him from a severe famine for years. Then, after 400 years of slavery, Moses came and set the people free because God remembered and had heard their cries. And yet, even after being set free and going through the Red Sea with the parting of the waters, the people were still filled with stubbornness and stiff-neckedness, so that for 40 years they wandered around trying to experience what it meant to depend upon God, and to live with God. A time of repentance, a time of joy, a time of repentance, a time of straying away. And as they were moving in this 40 years and for thousands of years since, the people of Israel remember the Passover, the time when God passed over them with the angel of darkness and death as he was setting them free from Pharaoh in Egypt. Throughout the Bible, we see the prophets and we see disappointments in people and as we go up and down and stray away from God and come back to him. Because you see, sin is too much for us. We are incapable of this recovery. Just imagine how God's heart must ache for his creation all because they chose rebellion over obedience and forever marred the image in which they were made, the image of God himself. God's creation was in a dire position, and we can't get back to him, forever lost and doomed to hell, a place that he never created for us. In those desperate times, desperate measures, extreme measures had to be taken. And taken they were, because in the fullness of time, God himself, the Word, became flesh, incarnate through the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. And Jesus Christ was born. He lived and loved, fully human and fully divine, lived a life for one purpose and one purpose only, that he would suffer and die for you in the world. He would pay that ransom for us, so that through his blood and his righteousness we might be justified and made clean. God took this extreme measure because he loved the world so much that he gave up his only son to die, so we could be set free from sin and death. He conquered death itself so that you no longer must die but may have everlasting life. Are you free? Do you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? It's simple, but it is so hard to do. If you do not know Jesus Christ and want to have a personal relationship with him, it is a matter of trust and of faith. And would you be willing right now to give your entire life over to him? to no longer count it as your own, but to submit it to him. If you are, join with me now in a simple prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving me and for sending your son to die for me. I sincerely repent of my sins and receive now Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And now... As your child, I turn my entire life over to you. Amen. 
Saying this simple prayer is an extreme measure when it's said from the heart. You give up your right to yourself. You belong 100% to God. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, you become a new creation, made in the image of God, no longer marred, but righteous in His sight. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Fastened down, I spent the night in sleeplessness, rose at every sound, half in hopeless sorrow, half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall, and the gate began to rattle voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. But there was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told us where she'd been. She said they've moved him in the night None of us knows where The stone's been rolled away And now his body isn't there We both ran toward the garden Then John ran on ahead We found the stone in the empty tomb Just the way that Mary said But the winding sheet they'd wrapped him in Was just an empty shell how or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Something strange had happened there, but just what I didn't know. John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high, because I'd seen them crucify him. Then I saw him die Back inside the house again The guilt and anguish came Everything I'd promised him Just added to my shame Cause when at last it came to choices I denied I knew his name Even if he was alive Light that came from everywhere Drove shadows from the room Jesus stood before him With his arms held open wide I fell down on my knees And just clung to him and cried He raised me to my feet And as I looked into his eyes Love was shining out from him Like sunlight from the skies Guilt and my confusion Disappeared in sweet release And every fear I'd ever had Just melted into peace Thank you. 
Heaven's gates are open wide He's alive He's alive He's alive and I'm forgiven Heaven's gates are open wide He's alive He's alive He's alive And now, let us join together in our historic statement of faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on the screen and in our hymnal on page 882. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the grave, on the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the time in our service when we bring our tithes and our offering to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day and for all things. We ask now that you receive these gifts of tithes and offerings to be put forth to your flock, for a blessing upon them and multiply them, so that they may do a mighty thing in your name, and that you receive all the honor and glory for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Our closing hymn comes to us again from Praise and Harmony, Glory Land. May the peace of God be and abide with you all. Depart in peace. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his